It's Brew Crew territory, Braun and Kratz. We've been with you all season long, and we are here for the difficult times. Craig Council is not the manager of the Milwaukee Brewers anymore because the Brewers didn't want to pay him. Or it's because the Cubs paid him a lot. They didn't want to pay him as much as the Cubs. That's fair. And maybe some of this also, Kratz, had to do with the future direction of the club or the short-term direction of the club, which is a topic of discussion going on right now as well. So we're going to get into a lot of this and then also stay tuned later. We'll come back and get ready for a Rowdy Telez conversation, which is always fantastic. So that'll that'll kind of be your positive vibe, your glass half full, your, hey, I just need something to make me laugh kind of thing. So first, brace yourselves for a lot of Craig Council talk in the aftermath on Brew Crew territory. Ken, you have to you have to subside the the fire that is running through Milwaukee right now. This whole like your your whole the story about like where does this end? Who made the right decision was fascinating to me. Well, Eric, this was one of those things, the council decision that we'll be talking about for years. How it went down who made the right calls, Brewers, Mets, Cubs, just how it all evolves. And I don't know the answers to that, obviously. And it just, to me, is still so shocking what happened. That not only did he leave the Brewers, that wasn't so shocking. That we've been talking about for months. Brewers fans were telling me I was full of it for months. No, this was going to happen. He was going to look for the most money. If the Brewers gave it to him, great, he'd stay in Milwaukee. But that is what he wanted to do. He talked yesterday to the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel about wanting a new challenge as well. That's probably true. The Brewers are in a kind of a tough place right now. But the shocking part of this to me, to everyone in the industry, is that he left for their division rival, for the bigger city to the south. All of these things came into play. And it's going to be difficult for him going back to Milwaukee as a manager of the Cubs. We know that. He's almost a pariah. He is a pariah in his adopted hometown. Actually, it is his hometown. It's from the Milwaukee area. So that part of it to me is really the stunner here. But as I wrote, Eric, Craig Council's intentions were clear. He wanted to raise the bar for managers' salaries, which is a worthy goal because managers have been underpaid for too long now. And teams kind of undervalue that role. That kind of, they do undervalue that role. So I understand what he was doing. I just was shocked that it ended up the way it did. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's one of the more shocking things that's happened while I've covered this team. Uh, you know, Joe Madden's hiring. There was a couple weeks, uh, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, leading up to that where there were rumors. So that didn't come as a shock. The Jose Quintana trade, that kind of came out of nowhere, but there were there was a little bit of leaking on that as well. This I don't think anybody saw this coming outside of a very small group with the Cubs front office and Craig Council because this uh, uh, yeah this blindsided a lot of people not just uh, you know not just David Ross but throughout the industry. Uh, I I understand the move. I think Craig Council is arguably the best manager in baseball. Terry Francona is retired. Bruce Bochy has another World Series championship, and then you talk about Craig Council right there with with them. So it, it's uh, I I understand this in, in a purely baseball sense, but it, it's it's it, you know the the human side of it. Uh, it, it feels a little it, it it doesn't feel great, right? This is a guy that was handpicked to replace Joe Madden. Uh, a lot of talk at the time was the Cubs wanted to maximize their roster, kind of like the Brewers do, kind of like Craig Council does, and they believe David Ross was that man. Now they have Craig Council doing exactly that for them. Uh, it's it, 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 I'm fascinated to see where it goes from here because this isn't a perfect roster, but certainly they have uh, one of the best managers to lead the group. I think, Kratz, because we didn't get to cover it that much, Mark Atanasio saying, like, you're leaving the community, I mean – the Cubs offered him like double the money. They put him in a bad position. I mean, I, I don't know. Ex do we know what the years were from the Brewers? I just saw a couple of reports Five. that said it was about double the money. So if he got 40, I'm assuming the Brewers offered three, maybe four. That was in the low 20 range. Whatever it is. That's not close. 
I'm assuming four years. I'm assuming they offered four years because the number I heard was five and a half million, which would have made him the highest paid manager by a million. The right, Cubs, but, but the Cubs still beat him by double. So to me, if I'm Craig Council, I'm offended by that statement. I would say to ownership, that's offensive. Another team thinks I'm worth this. You think I'm worth half of that. And this is not big money. Not, okay, yeah, the length of the contract. But Council had a lifetime contract there. If he signed for $5.5 million, he would have just continually re-signed. Continually re-signed. So I think, I think there's a little bit, you know, he was trying to, he was trying to rally his, his fan base. What if but they lost 100 games the next four seasons in Milwaukee? He's, he's guaranteed to be the highest paid manager for life? No, if I mean if they don't win, no. Obviously, he doesn't even want to be there if they don't win. He's not. He's not a manager that's looking to rebuild. So then, that's not a lifetime contract. That's not, yeah, that's that's. You just said he had a lifetime contract. He could be there for as long as he wanted to be there. So you're so saying you just got even if, even if he wanted to be there and they lose 100 games three years in a row, he's like, I still want to be back. They'd be like, Yeah, hit the road. Okay, so you're saying he he's got to get his 40 million right up front here and take it. He's in the Midwest. Clearly a location he likes. I mean, I read a lot about how the Mets offered lower and then didn't want to become the bidding war for a place that I think they were tipped off he didn't mm-hmm. want to end up in. I was wrong. I'll take the hit on that. I was like, he's going wherever the top money is. Sounded like the Mets and the Cubs, even if the Mets did get up to that number, were going to be close enough that he was going to choose to be in the Midwest. Cool. All good, right? So they didn't want to get involved in that when they didn't feel like he was going there. And if anyone would have the inclination, it would be David Stearns. So, okay, let's shift to the Midwest. He's in Chicago. He's going to have what presumably should be more resources in a very winnable division most years. And he's being offered double the money, not just for himself and his family and his life, but also for the position, which is what we're talking about right now, to raise the value of the position if you are worth it. To me, it wasn't even close. And I think it's offensive because I do think there is not a ball club in MLB that can't afford to pay an extra few million bucks for their manager. You know, even if you're... If you're Milwaukee and you want to sign one less, you know, flyer free agent or something like that and justify it that way, if you're given like an annual budget, right? I don't know why I did quotes like that. Who cares? I just don't understand why we're looking at it this way. I think my thing with Jed Hoyer Kratz too is that the he looked at how the Brewers have done more with less many years and wants the Cubs to be able to do that even on years where maybe they don't spend as much or Maybe they're going through injuries. He feels like this guy gets more out of his ball club based on his in-game managing, based on how he handles the clubhouse, and even how he's like the spokesman for the team as far as handling the media. And I think they made the right move there. If that's how they feel he is in the game, it's worth the money. This is chump change for MLB teams. If there's a smaller market, tell me where it is in Milwaukee. If there's a team that can't afford it, but maybe they it is the Brewers. afford it. Their payroll is... Dude, their pay, their payroll, what was their payroll this year? Probably like, like 120 something. Okay. So, if your payroll for next year is 125, subtract 8 and then do your payroll. Or really subtract 4 cuz you already kind of put in for 4 or 5 mil, right? Subtract a few million bucks from your payroll in what you have to work with for the off season and you can't field the team that you want to field. I just I think it's a garbage excuse. Mm-hmm. I think I think there's also Reports that I've heard, there wasn't much back and forth. He got that offer, and I don't know that he went back to the. I don't know that he went back to Antonasio. So well, maybe he maybe listen. Maybe he also knows what's going to happen. Maybe he knows they're going about to go through a rebuild, and he's like, I don't want to be a part of it. And I can cash in. I mean, I think you know we talked about it yesterday. Without him, bye bye Burns, no Woodruff, bye bye. I don't, I don't know, know if you guys. Route. Maybe I don't know if you guys heard Sharma talking. Sharma talking. I, he's kind of on my side of what the Cubs are going to do next. The Cubs, he doesn't think the Cubs are going to push all in. They played the clip right after he said this, and you guys were talking, oh, they're going to be in for this, they're going to be in for that, all this. He doesn't think that the Cubs are going to be all in, and that's kind of why they went with Council, that they can keep nickel and diming and putting a roster together, but Council's going to figure out how to win it. My only thing I have a problem with is just trying to pin it on saying a dude, you know, took the money to be a traitor or something like that. He doesn't owe them something. I don't think that's fair. He did a lot. You contributed a lot while you were there. Let's appreciate that and say, okay, our 
our team, our ownership decided this job, this position is not worth that rate. So we move on. Right? Yeah. It's not his fucking fault. There should no, it's be, not council's they, fault. When he comes back, right, next year, what will they do? What and what should they do? I mean, they're, they're, there's going to be some cheers and some boots. They're going to cheer. They should cheer the hell out of him. Like they won't. Ryan Braun came back and they cheered the hell out of well, him. Well, he only did steroids, so that's not as big of a deal. Ryan Braun <laughs> came back. When did Ryan Braun come back? After his suspension, his suspension for, you know, not knowing oh. what he was taking with some other they, people. They stood up and cheered. And that's I mean, fine. No, it's, it's Brian Milwaukee. Braun's in their damn Hall of Fame. Right. So my yeah. point is, wait, correct me if I'm wrong. Why Milwaukee fans, we should put this out of here. When Craig Council comes back next year, you're going to give him a standing ovation, right? No? No. Have you followed Milwaukee Twitter? No. It's, close enough. It's on fire. I tried to put out a tweet to cut. I just said basically just about, hey, you know, like cheer the fact that this man went to as many playoffs as he did. He did this as a player. Like don't, yes, it hurts that he's leaving. And yes, it hurts even more that he went to the Cubs, but don't just chastise him. Like he was in a position to move on. And man, the responses that I got, they were like, you know, some of the nicest ones were like, yes, I understand what you're saying, but I will not cheer this man. And then it was, and then it was, I will never cheer for him. And all of the memories of these playoffs will be seared in my mind, but I will blot him out of my existence. And somebody sent me like a Thanos snapping. Like they are, they are going to boo the absolute snot out of him. From Ken, those sources briefed on the Brewers discussions, but not authorized to discuss them publicly, say the team is open to moving virtually any player on its roster. Now, they already started. They traded Mark Hanna. He's a pretty good player. He's worth that contract for one year, in my mind. Corbin Burns has one year left. Arbitration, probably about 15 mil. Obviously, Woodruff's hurt. We don't know when he's going to come back. About 12 mil for arbitration for him, potentially. Uh, Devin Williams is a free agent after 2025. And Willie Adamas is a free agent after this season. You want to go really crazy? Christian Yelich has five years, 130 mil left on his contract. No one's picking that up. I don't his think he wants to go anywhere. No either. one's picking that. He had one a good up, year. Though. He had a good year, but still, nobody's going to pick that one up. Okay. I anyway, I don't believe. What's what's happening agree. here? Man, man on the scene, our Brewers expert, Eric Kratz. Where? What do you think is going to happen this off season? Yep, it's you. We call on you. Do you think this team is going to tear it down? Because the one thing I will say, and I respect them for this, the Brewers don't really believe in full on rebuilds. Their owner, Mark Atanasio, has talked about that, and I like that. I mean, it sucks to do the full-on tank mode. The only thing is they're looking at the market and saying it's it's definitely full of teams that need starters, and they're realizing what Texas just did and that they need more in terms of starting pitching and starting pitching depth. Not everybody's going to get you know Yamamoto, Nola, etc. And on the offensive side, with someone like Adamas, for example, it's a bad, bad free agent market in terms of position players. There's just not much there. So a few dudes at the top and then gets really thin. So there's a market inefficiency. It's a great word in the front office world for all the dudes that have um, stomach issues right now. But what do you think happens? Well, I think market inefficiencies revolve really around Willie Adamas. To me, what other shortstops are available? Somebody that can play shortstop every single day. Whether you think his value is high or not, 30 home run bat at shortstop is rare. And a bunch of teams just went through the whole shortstop cavalcade that went into, I think it was last year and the previous year's free agency. And I think it'll revolve around him. The, the Brewers can move Bryce Terang, who should have been a gold glove candidate at second. They could move him to short. And if they are able to get a huge return, Again, I don't know if they can, but I think if they can get a huge return, then I think they would move somebody like Burns. Then I think they would lock up a Woodruff for, let's say, a two-year deal in the $25 million range with a club option. I mean, not two years for 25. The full, the full contract, $25 million, since he's going to be hurt most of the year, then he can come back and then possibly a club option type of thing. And then you take those pieces and you essentially play for 2025. 
not a complete rebuild, but never they're never going to be an all-in team. They're just going to be a perpetual build, build, build team and never go all the way down, but also never go all the way to the peak. So to me, I think it hinges around Willie Adamas because you can always trade Burns. But if you trade Burns, now you still have Adamas hanging out and you don't have like it's like, okay, well, am I getting value out of him? Shortstop position, home runs, 30 pumps, 25 pumps from the shortstop position. To me, that's a very – it's an underrated value. I know it's talked about a lot, but his value in a trade market I think could be really huge after people figure out where Chapman goes because he's a defensive first type of type of position player. Do you have a teaser in your mouth right now? Oh, yeah. It's a teaser yeah. deck, kid. Yeah. I like it. Sam. Peppermint. I don't do drugs, kid. Till Sunday. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> I'm jacked. <laughs> teaser. Drug. Teaser. Do I have to educate you right now? I know what teases. I, I've tried a teaser. They're very delicious. No nicotine, no tobacco. I know. They're very delicious. And the flavors. The flavors are awesome. Well, that's why I asked because yeah. I could tell a little bit. Yeah. Um, Corbin Burns, by the way, if Corbin they Burns put his name out there, you. a huge haul. I don't know if Willie Adamas would get that big of a haul. He's got one more year left, and he had he had a down year for him this past year. Um, listen, Woody, big woo, he's hurt. Shoulders are never good. Mm. Shoulders are one of those that you're like, ah, is he ever going to come back? I know a lot of guys had shoulders, never came back. He's young, though. Still, John Danks was young. He had shoulder surgery. Never, He couldn't even throw a ball from here to me to you after he had shoulder surgery. It, was, it wasn't the same. Uh, listen, they, now Williams, they trade him. Devin Williams, they could get something for him. They got some bullpen pieces they could probably trade. Uh, but, gosh, it, it just – I mean, listen, they could trade William Contreras and probably get something too. Um I don't know. I feel like the Brewers are in one of those weird spots. They're kind of in between now, especially after losing Council. Yelich, listen, I love Christian Yelich not only as a player but as a guy. I just don't think a team's going to be willing to take on five one thirty. So that's what twenty six million a year for Christian Yelich. He's had some down years. He had a better year this year, Kratz. <clears throat> it's it's just a weird spot they're in because they never. I don't think deep down they ever thought Council would leave. I know the reports are saying, oh, they thought this was possible, but. Yeah, I, I I just don't think that they ever thought he would truly leave. They'd always just be there. So losing him was the start of the dominoes. And then my boy Corbin, Corbin Burns, who's obviously my favorite player since I have his card every day. I mean, he's he's got to be next. If you if you don't want to do a full rebuild, you trade Corbin Burns, get some major league talent ready, talent back, and start start for twenty four and twenty five. But this is this is why I'm saying Adamus because both of them are going to be gone after twenty five. I mean, after 24. So if Adamus doesn't get you value, which when teams are looking at Adamus's value, yes, they could be buying low. But you just said like, well, nobody's going to get, nobody's going to take Yelly if, because he just had, you know, he had a couple down years and now he had an up year. So then it would be, well, he should, they should trade him. But Adamus had a down year, so they won't get as much value. To me, his value is in the fact that he plays a premium position. He plays a premium position, and he had 24 pumps this year, 24 homers. He's clearly unlocked his home run ability since he's gone to Milwaukee with 20 in Milwaukee. That year he ended up having 25, five with the Rays, 31, 24. Look, he's never going to be this on-base monster, but his batting average was the lowest this year. To me, your batting average gets better, especially as athletic shortstops. It will get better the older you get because you learn to hit. So he had a down year, yes. But to me, if they can kick off a trade with a team who is looking to upgrade offense, <coughs> everybody at the trade deadline last year, there was no offense available, and they have it in Willie Adamas. They have somebody who can fill in, learn the position, and is a solid above-average defender in Bryce Terang, and then you can kick off, you know what? We're gonna keep we're gonna keep uh, Devin Williams because he'll be our closer for 2025. He can hit free agency, and then they have always done a good job of filling in pieces, getting pieces here and there, here and there to sustain you for the season. And that's not even saying that the season's gonna be a wash in 24, but that's only if the Cubs don't go all in. If the Cubs go all in, you know, I think then the Central is theirs, but. And if the Cardinals get like three starting pitchers, but anyway, that's that's where I think that's where I think it, it lies. 
Because if you just get rid of Burns, it feels like, okay, well, what are we getting for Burns? Are we getting a lot? But okay, but but what? Are you getting a big league starting what pitcher? Other, what other teams di- do shouldn't dictate what you do. So like whatever the Cubs do, that shouldn't dictate what the Brewers do. No, 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 what, no. I was that was more on that was more <clears> on <throat> I'm saying that their chances in the central. They're, they're not, not gonna they're they're not gonna they're probably not gonna win the central this year. And I, I feel like I, honestly not I, that this is Freddie Peralta is another guy they might want to think about. Lots of good stuff there, obviously. FT all over the story from front to back. And for me, Kratz, I like a lot of times what the Brewers have done as an organization. And Mark Atanasio, the owner of the team, usually doesn't really re- rebuild or doesn't believe in a full-on rebuild. I respect that a lot. Um, but saying that you know, Craig's leaving the community and all that, I mean, you let him get to free agency and you didn't pay him. And then some Brewers fans, like one of them went to the the Craig Council Park and put ass or something. I'm like, come on, guys. I mean, he gave you, he gave you a lot. And they've cheered for people who have done a lot less in Milwaukee. I just want to make sure that fans understand. And I've actually seen most fans that I follow or interact with or have seen posting to other clips have been like, damn, two million bucks, three million bucks. Like, felt like it was worth it. Should have just thrown more money at him and kept him. A lot of the people on Brewers Twitter that I follow and that follow me were like, burn. Burn the sign down. Take it all away. They're wrong. And they're wrong. They're wrong. Like, Craig did so much. I know it hurts. And I think that's part of what Mark's, Mark Antanasio's comments were, you know, were fueled by. Hurt. But he's culpable in this, too. He didn't offer that extra money. He knows front and center firsthand the value that counts brings to the organization and to a roster that will never be a Texas Rangers buy your roster type of roster. And that's okay. I respect Mark for the way he is a competitive owner and he wants to win for the city of Milwaukee. But to say he lost us, uh, you know, it, it stings. Listen, it stings right now. Okay, we're a few days out. It's going to sting a little less by Thanksgiving, a little less than that by Christmas. And then it's going to sting a little bit more when the Cubs come back to town on May 24th or 26th, whenever that is. But you know what? This guy is somebody that I respect, somebody that I saw and played against, somebody that I saw and played for. And then I watched him after I was done playing. And he never, ever shied away from questions, answers, um, you know, just different things that were going negatively. He was there for the Milwaukee community. He grew up in the Milwaukee, Milwaukee community. He lived there. He played there. He managed there. And he is a guy that has commanded respect in that city, in the city of Milwaukee for years. And it should stay that way. Did he go to the crosstown rival? Absolutely. Is he going to do well when he goes there? Absolutely, because that's what Craig does. But to like deface a park with his name on it, stop, people. Like, stop. You know, get your jests out there, but get your get your energy behind the next manager, whoever that's gonna be. Get your energy behind a team that just won the division. Look, the Cubs, while you may look at them as a big brother, you have beaten the snot out of them since 2018 and on. And there's been there was a huge shift in that season in 2018. I think we started like one and eight and then finished like nine and two on the rest of the season. I guess that math might not work out right, but it was it was a and since then the Brewers have dominated the Cubs. So don't look down there and say, oh man, you know, the Cubs, blah, blah, blah. Say, okay, now we're just gonna beat Craig Council and the Cubs. Yeah. That's how you should use your energy. Yeah, enjoy the movie, you know, and you've got storylines here. So my thing also is you had him for a long time. You should be looking at your organization and saying, how come we let him get to free agency? Because he automatically has to sign with us for the price that we give him and say, oh, it's more than any other managers making right now. I know, but a team said he's worth way more than that. And also that. They've been suppressing manager salaries for years. That should be broken. So I don't know know what you want them to do. I don't 
don't think he did anything wrong on that front. Cubs approached him, said, we really want you. Here's the bag that you didn't get offered from the Brewers. Because guess what? If the Brewers had offered him during his time period, because they even they leaked whatever it was, five and a half, which I think was three or four years, and the Cubs destroyed that offer. While he was there, two, three years ago, hey, Craig, five, six more years, six mil a year, whatever it was, probably would have signed. But you let him get to free agency. You let him test the market. That's how shit works. Dave Roberts spoke well about the topic too. Anyway, Raddy Telez always is a joy to talk to. And we have him on Brew Crew Territory to raise everyone's spirits. Raddy, good to see you, dude. Well, Happy well, offseason. Where are you? What have you been up to? Um, I'm in Dallas. I'm back home. Um, then just been working out, uh, taking care of, you know, those long injuries, those, you know, long season stuff. And then um, just getting ready. I head up to Kansas for my first hunt, believe it or not, tomorrow. So that'll be nice. Get away from it a little bit. Wait, are you going with uh, no. Henderson and those boys? Absolutely not. I don't hunt with people. I don't want to deal with people. Those guys strike me as guys that talk about baseball too, and that's the last thing I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They do. They want to talk about how they're going to make it through and get further in the playoffs next season. That's fine. And Dan- I didn't even watch a World Series, so. <laughs> oh, great. Well, we were going to spend about 15 minutes asking you play-by-play of what went down. Do, do you know well, anything? Do you know that the Rangers won? I do. I saw that. I know Corey Seager hit a home run in like every game, and that's about all I know. Only thing I saw was uh, Marcus Simeon is probably one of my favorite teammates, one of the better teammates, and I know that last couple games he turned it on. So I was, I was good. I was happy for him. I saw that home run. But other than that, I didn't watch a ton. Well, can I ask you a question without even watching the World Series? Can you explain to me why a team would look at one of the top hitters in the sport who has now proven to be one of the most clutch hitters in the sport in Corey Seager and continue to give him pitches to hit when you could – clearly work around him to pitch to some other dudes. And that also includes Adolis Garcia was hot as hell for a stretch in the postseason, and then he got hurt, and they still were pitching to Corey, which you know I found a little bit questionable, and fans in Arizona were kind of freaking out. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to intentionally walk him every A-B, but I think they gave him a lot to hit. Yeah, I mean, baseball is baseball. Sometimes I mean, you know, you're not trying to throw that pitch, and you end up throwing it right down the middle. Uh, but – yeah, it kind of blows my mind when you got somebody like that who's, you know, just anything you throw through the zone, he's he's putting a barrel on it. Um, kind of makes you wonder why you don't just unintentional, the old unintentional, intentional walk where you just see if he swings or not, and if he does, he does. And but most of the time, he's just, uh, yeah. That lineup was, you know, once they lost Adolis, it was like, why are we, why? There's nobody else really that can do the damage that he was doing, but you know. Wait, really for matter. someone for someone that didn't watch the World Series, you sure know a lot of shit about the World Series. <laughs> I literally just repeated what somebody else said. <laughs> <laughs> People do that all the time, actually. But Kratz, like, am I missing anything? I mean, did I explain that well? Tried to keep it simple, but just I, I felt like there were pitches oh. that I mean, there were even earlier in the series some first pitch fastballs to Corey Seager, which I don't know. Have you been watching Corey Seager for like the eight years that he's been in the bigs? That's kind of his thing the highest he swings at all of them he swings at all of them he swung he just swung today at a first pitch <laughs> exactly um rowdy so tell me what you're up to this off season aside from the hunt coming up by yourself anything on the books plan wise and also what do you do as far as taking time away from swings and then when you kind of go back to it and do you tweak that per off season yeah I, um I was just at my best friend's wedding in Scottsdale. They did it at a resort, and so I had to do the best man speech. They said, keep it like two to four minutes, and I did six and a half of just a pure roast of them. So um, it was that, you know, that was what we did to start the offseason. And then just throughout, you know, I like to hunt, like to relax, um, kind of get away from reality. Uh, and then, but, you know, I started working out like 10 days ago. Uh, you know, last week basically, and then uh, I start Pilates. So that'll be <laughs> wait, what? Wait, wait, what? <laughs> Dude, I got, wait, wait. I got to do it. Wait, I gotta, wait, wait. I gotta, wait. I'm trying to get more flexible. So wait, hold up, because I do Pilates, and uh, 
I'm not flexible at all, but I mean, I feel like you on a, do you do like the machine Pilates or the floor Pilates or, or are you on a reformer? What's, what's your go-to I'm Pilates? On, I'm on. He gone. See? Sorry. He's I got there. a phone call. Uh, I'm on a reformer. I do a private class so they can't make fun of me because I'm not good at it. I'm like really, it's like trying to mold like dried cement. Like it, I don't move well. So I just want to be able to move well. So I started that this off season and it, it sucks. Anybody that's done it knows it's not fun. It's ho- really hard. It is. And I, I feel I, bad because was... the lady's like, lady's like trying to like adjust me and I'm like sweating through my whole uni. And I'm like, I feel bad for this girl. Do you wear brewer shirts when you work out? Dude, I just came from the gym. I don't have brewers anything on. I don't Dang. even no. Did you walk from the gym I'm or not... did you run from the gym? You're sweating like <laughs> Francisco Cervelli at a drug test. I'm, I'm not. But I've only played for two teams, so I don't have, like, a ton of shit like you do. You know, I don't have anything, you know, like, where my whole wardrobe is everything you have. But, no, I was t- I did it I did it when I was younger. I wore, like, my Blue Jay stuff in the minor leagues, you know, to go work out at my gym in the offseason. And uh, my old high school pitching coach – pitched in the big leagues for a couple months and he saw me in it and he wore me out about letting people know he was like hey you don't even have a lansing lug nut shirt on you're not even on the blue jays so why do you have toronto blue jays stuff you're not even that good he kind of just went in on me and i was like all right well i'll never do that again <laughs> so smart, that kind of ended that, and i was like all right dude i'm just gonna wear gym clothes smart guy i, I really thought yeah. my money was on kratz and me um being the pilates experts I've, i don't think i've ever done pilates kratz of you no pilates no. Do you, think, do you think FT fans, if we were like, hey, FT people that are watching right now, which half of the screen is doing Pilates and which half is not? I think it would have been like 90% would have guessed Kratz and me. Yeah, that's crazy. Bit, Good. I like the, it. I like the it. Athletes. The athletes. The yeah. athletes are doing Pilates. We got do, you wear, ready. Do, you wear, do you wear shorts that makes it look like you're smuggling grapes when you're doing Pilates? Um. I kind of got some short ones on. I wear leggings too, though. You know, just leggings or shorts over. I hope that's yoga pants for men. Yeah, pretty much shorts over. I got to keep it, you know. And then I wear a high waisted one, so it makes it look like I'm already down twenty pounds. You know, you got to. It's. <laughs> I'm trying to be aerodynamic, and I got to look good. You know, I just for when they do ever show me. So then they're like, "Man, he's working hard." And then I just kind of take it off. It's like you know that fat girl in the club where you're like, "Dude, she looks good," and then she gets back to your house and she drops it out, and you're like, "Damn." I got fooled. <laughs> Whose idea with this, by the way, for the Pilates? Is it you or the team or a mix? No. This is – AJ's been there. AJ, AJ knows what I'm talking about. Uh, this is a no, rowdy my... special. Again, this, this this side of the screen is on a whole other planet right now. But Because, I'm yeah, to... because we do Pilates. I've done yoga, Pilates my whole career. Yep. Dude, I can hardly touch my toes. So I just, I'm trying to get <laughs> me too, but, but I also no, have never my, pulled a hamstring. Yeah. I can't pull fat. Uh, that is a true saying. Um, no, my PT, my PT, um, away from the team was like, Hey, we need to do a lot of things this year. And I was like, yeah, we should do a lot of things. She was like, we're going to get you a dietitian and a new trainer, Pilates and a massage therapist. And I was like, cool. Who's paying for this? And she was like, you are. And I was like, all right. <laughs> is it worth it? Yourself. You think it's you think it's gonna be worth it? I I do. I mean, it, I feel good. I mean, I know I've lost um, some weight already, and I and I feel good. I you know I just it's hard. It is tough, and it's just one of those things where like as much as I want to eat bad food, or even you know the toughest part is when you go hunting or you got to hang around people. Like, and of course, like when you're a big dude, all your friends have like the metabolism of a 14 year old, so they can eat whatever they want, and it's just. I'm over there eating rabbit food, sweating because I want a piece of pizza. What do you like? You hunt by yourself, though, so you can eat whatever you want. Yeah, like if I'm by myself, I hunt by myself. I'm not in camp. Like I'm in camp with other people, but like I'm by myself. You know, like I don't, I don't know what those dudes do. They're like <laughs> Gen Z. They're like young kids. They probably sit there on their iPads and watch TV while they sit in a warm, heated stand. I sit in a tree stand. It's cold. So what are your goals? What are, what are, what are your goals? Like, are you trying to like touch it? You said you can't touch your toes. Is that like a goal? Like I want to be able to touch my toes. I basically want to look like you, 
But Dude, it, if you look like I'll me, take... you would be so arrogant. You, everybody, nobody would want to be around you if you. So, like, I'm serious. Like, how much weight do you want to lose? Like, is that a thing? I look like some you power. From, yeah, I look like you from the eyebrows up right now. But I, I want to. <laughs> I, I want to realistically lose like fifteen to twenty pounds. Add, add some muscle, but just like help with the agility around the base. You know, I really want to be a, a, a better defender. Um, I think a lot of people kind of write me off for that. I'm good around the bag, but I just don't have a ton of range. That first step quickness kind of lacks. So I think with losing weight, um, it'll be easier on my body and it'll be, you know, it's good for the long term to play, play defense and play for a long time. So, Rowdy, are you going to be that guy in camp where they go, um, what's the acronym? BS. Oh, Best L. shape of my life. You know BSOL, right? B-S-O-M-L. But... O-M-L. Thank you. Yeah. Um, no. But round is a shape, so I've always been in a good shape. <laughs> when someone asks you that in spring training, that's got to be your first answer. <laughs> it always is. Usually it's, usually it's Corb looking at me, and he's like, and I'm like, hey, what's up, dude? How'd the offseason go? He's like, Good, good. And he was like, how was yours? You you do anything this year? And I'm like, yeah, man, it worked out hard. And he's like, oh. And at the buffet? And I'm like, no, dude. I don't need your bullshit right now. <laughs> kind of, good. Do, I have a question, Raddy. Do, do teams still do the meetings right after the season? Like, do you have the whole formal sit down and they go, okay, here's what you did well. Here's what we want you to work on. Report card kind of stuff. Or is it more casual these days? Because guys can't handle that. Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I did when I was younger, but not, I didn't do it this year. Did nothing. No, I basically so no had meeting. my stuff packed, but no, I, I didn't get one. You might have to be important for that, but <laughs> I, I definitely didn't get one. So, but I don't know. I, I really don't, you know, this, I think kind of coming into this off season, it was just, let's do everything I can to put myself in the best situation for next year. Uh, obviously didn't have the year I wanted to, uh, injury. So I just want to take care of that and get that out of the way and make sure I was doing a lot better on that front and then just get going and, and start the off season. Yeah. <laughs> I saw that about the Craig Raider. I, uh, I really, really enjoyed playing for him. He's a really, really smart manager. Um, really good individual. Really. He gets it. You know, he played a long time, played world series. He just wants to win. And I think he brings that every year into spring training of just that winning mindset. And that's why we go to the playoffs every year. I think that's why a lot of guys want to come play for him. Um, a lot of guys excel around him just because he brings that energy. And he's, he, he promotes a really good environment and like a family environment. Like these are your brothers from day in, day out. You know, it's cheesy, like the whole brother speech and you're going to battle. But like he really does embrace it and he really does talk about it um, and just is just he's good with it. He's really good. And he brings in a staff that allows you to be you, but also kind of it's kind of like that, not a college environment where like he allows you to be you, but when he sees something, he's going to call you out. Like that's exactly what he does. You know, he, he's going to let you succeed. He's going to let you fail. But if he feels like you're doing something wrong and you're not doing it right, uh, he'll call you out and kind of just be like, Hey man, he's, he's really good with communication. Basically. You know, like Bruce Bochy just won another world series. I don't know what he's making this year, but he was the highest paid skipper from 27 to 2019, six mil a year. And, you know, he's been pretty damn good and he's been earning his money. You know, sometimes there's dudes that come into the league and not that they're necessarily bad, but you know, teams are offering them six figure contracts. So I'm wondering how you think the importance of a manager can change a team, same team, two different dudes, how much of a difference it can make in terms of wins and losses. Uh, I don't know about how, I don't even know what managers make to be honest. Well, Bochi was six I, mil in 2017 through 2019. Um, I think, Kratz, help me out. Was Craig's reported at like three and a half? Yeah, three point five. Three point five. I mean, but it's not. I mean, it's not substantiated, but yeah, I think I think it's right. Um, you know, I think it it should be a scale like how baseball players are. Obviously, the better you are, the better you manage, um, the more you should get paid. And and I feel it's just like it's a it's a free agency. You know, like you you want to go somewhere you want to, you want to go somewhere where you feel valued, but um, the money's also an aspect. I mean. I know a couple of you guys have been free agents, so you, you kind of look at it that way. Like, you want to make money, but you also want to be somewhere where you want it. And, um, you know, like, a lot of it has to do with players also. But some of these big market teams are willing to pay. And if that's what you want, then that's what you want. You know, I, I can't speak for Craig. I don't know what he really wants. And 
Um, you know, I know deep down he wants to win a World Series. He's done it as a player multiple times, so that's what he wants. But, um, you know, I do think managers should be paid according to how they're performing uh, for starters. But then, you know, if you play for New York Yankees, they're going to have more money than than the Tampa Bay Rays. You know, that's just how it's going to be then. But I, I don't know. I can't really speak on that front. All right. We got, you know, Halloween just passed. Big Wu was just on. I want you to hear what Big Wu has to say here. So, we'll and they're still scarred from Rowdy Telez sending his freaking jammed up finger, and and he said we could oh post it. God. And I was all right. So Jesus, yeah, send us something. I mean, nice, this dude, but... he thinks he's an athlete trying to fill fly balls in the outfield and just <laughs> bums up his finger. Come on, man. Uh, yeah, you can't know your place. Like Halloween. That looked like Halloween. <laughs> that, was, that was gore. For, for the record, Rowdy, I said nothing about your athletic prowess. I was bringing up how Woody should send us a picture of his Halloween costume. Um, and I did say your finger wins for Halloween costume, even though it was like three months ago. I think you meant to bring it up intentionally. I think that was something you really <laughs> wanted him to say something about. So, uh, But he's not wrong. That was just dumb on my part. I don't know what I was doing. I was just... I thought I was cool for a day, and then the crazy part was that I was supposed to be joining the team again in a couple of days. It's like my like time on the aisle was up, and then I stuck my finger through a meat grinder pretty much, and, and my nail's growing back, though. Let's see. Yeah. Barely tell anything. Oh, barely barely tell any, it looks like you chew on them. Yeah. Pretty much. Not bad. Not bad, dude. Yeah, it's it uh, it's not terrible. I mean, I have all the feeling in it, and nothing. It's just ugly. But all right, you know what? What? Just real quick, what'd you go as? Dress up as Halloween? Then we got to go. What'd you dress up as? I, nothing. I just handed out candy. I sat in front of my fireplace and or my fire pit outside in front of my house and handed out candy to kids. We're a full size candy bar household, so we are yeah. a full household. Yes. I'm proud of you. So Solid. I think we Solid. I think we bought three hundred and sixty, and we ran out. Solid. Wow. Yeah. Solid. Proud of you. But you didn't no, even have no, like a bought, hat, nothing. Eight boxes. Uh, Rowdy, you didn't have anything on, just a t-shirt? Just, just No, I did. I, this one kid, no, I had nothing on. I, I just had a, a like a regular warm jacket in front of my 49ers fire pit that they're currently letting me down for three straight weeks. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, I said that I had a couple of friends over. We had some trick-or-treating adult beverages. And then I had this one kid come up to me, and without saying trick-or-treating, he said, hey, brewers suck. And I said, okay, thanks, man. Appreciate it. And then I had another kid come up, fully dressed like he was from school. I said, hey, what are you for Halloween? And he was like, uh, I'm a fifth grader. And I was like, oh, nice. And he goes, yeah, we don't have money for costumes. I said, oh. Oh, okay. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> And then he didn't even say trick or treat. We have no kids saying trick or treat. We had the most polite little kids. We had a little three year old. She was dressed as Elsa. I gave her like three or four big candy bars because she just, she was a peach. Wait, a kid said brewers suck. Give me, <laughs> give me a candy bar. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. He walked. He walked right up. He was full. He walked up and he was like, "Is this the brewers household?" And I was like, "No, dude. I don't know what you're talking about." And he was like, "I do. I know." And I was like, "Okay." And he goes, "Brewers suck." And I was like, "Where's your dad?" And he was like, right there in the white hat. And I was like, hey, dude, I'm going to work on something here, man. Like, it's, it's good some, like, trick or treat, happy Halloween, something. I was like, dude, these kids. Yeah, thanks for and the they candy try and come back. And then, and then the worst part is they try and come back to your house like you don't have a memory. You know? <laughs> like, like autograph hey, hounds. Yeah, like, hey, dude, you were already here. No, I wasn't. That was my brother. Nice try, dude. You're the only dude that looks stupid out here today. Like, I know who you are. <laughs> That's why. Full candy bar. You get you get punished for it. Rowdy, good yeah. shit, dude. Keep us posted on the Pilates and the off-season plans. Um, maybe AJ will come out there and uh, do a class with you. That would be a great auction item. Oh, at a charity. We can do something in spring training. We can instruct a class. Ooh. Instruct I don't want to show you. Yeah, that's fine. We're going to be the instructors. I'll be the hands-on. You can be up there showing them. We'll get Yelly to buy all the stuff for us, you know. <laughs> uh, but Done. Book it. We'll do it. Telling our producer. Rowdy, cheers, man. We'll talk soon. All right. Talk to you later, guys. Good to see y'all. Thank you, Rowdy. So a lot still to be determined with this team. Ken Rosenthal floated that, you know, there could be a lot of moves made. There's dudes that are approaching free agency. 
I think there's a pretty good chance Corbin Burns gets dealt. Brandon Woodruff's case is, is super interesting, Kratz, because he's going he's gonna to be on a two-year deal somewhere because you just don't know about what next year's going to look like. Teams are not going to pay you know, good money for a season if they're not that sure that he'll return at all for next season. He told us on a previous episode that he will be back in his mind, or he's setting it up that way, at least in his mind, to be back kind of late in the summer or something like that. But anyway, I mean, everyone's going to want him. So actually, my advice would be, and I'm sure you'll agree, if you're the Brewers, make sure you give him a comparable offer to guys that have been in a similar situation before, where you're going to get most of the value out of him two years from now on a two-year deal. Okay? Because if you kind of lowball him, he'll do the same thing. He can test the market because otherwise they have to tender him an arbitration contract. He's not going to accept. I mean, they're not going to do that because they'd be paying him like 12 million bucks for a season that he might not pitch in. So just give him the two-year deal that you think he deserves if you love the medicals or and think that he's going to bounce back, which I think many do, because otherwise there's going to be 20-something teams calling for him. I think it might even be two years with a with a player option. You know, give him that, hey, you know what? You're going to give up another year of free agency. Like he would be a free agent after this year, but obviously a whole year of rehab. You got to incentivize him because you don't want to lose a guy like this. Does this mean it's a fire sale? No. It, I, I don't think it does because I've never seen a Brewers team in recent history do a fire sale. Do a yes, I get it. Everybody is everybody's available. But to me, where do you look on this roster and say, when can we compete the soonest, keeping the guys that we have to be able to maybe win in 2025 with a Woodruff? Because all of a sudden you're getting Woodruff back, big woos, a number one at the top of your rotation. Bernsey ain't gonna be there in 2025. So to me, if you have three free agents in Big Woo and Big Woo and Burns and Willie Adamas after the 2024 season, I'm going to set the over under at one and a half. How many are gone for the 2024 season? And I would ask anybody, who is it that's getting the most value to make this team competitive still? And that's that's the direction I move as the Brewers. My other thing is because this is all floating around now about what they're going to do. They they still might compete next year. I don't think that they're going to trade all of their guys. I don't think they should. The NL Central has proven to be a pretty mediocre division that they just won without Woodruff for most of the season. Yes, if you don't have Burns, it's a big loss. But you can sign some guys. I mean, they're going to be shedding some money. I don't like the narrative too. It's like, oh, we trade some guys away and now we're going to like cut payroll too. Why? I mean, it's had a very successful season, filled up the ballpark pretty good. You're getting the city to probably pay for a new ballpark. Like keep it going. Keep the good times going. You can transition and reload and they've done a great job of that. So I'm going to trust them on that front. I, I don't advise them to do the whole scrap it all down and, and rebuild. I don't like that for them, nope. especially if you're in the central, you shouldn't have to do that. The Guardians didn't even do that. Like they had a little bit of downtime. They, you know, obviously they're kind of just like floating a little bit, but they were in the playoffs a year ago. And I think the same thing holds true in the NL Central. The Brewers have plenty of pillars still in place. They've done a really great job of building a bullpen. And there's other core players, young players, right, that are a part of that team that I think are going to be very good. They nailed it with William Contreras. And they have a top two prospect who can hit coming up. Sometime next season in Jackson Churio. So I, I that would be my only caution flag is sure if they feel like they need to trade Burns, I I think people will understand that, but don't trade everyone necessarily, you know? Like Freddie P and even Devin Williams. I don't know if they necessarily have to get dealt right now. Now, if you don't have a good half season, does Devin Williams become available and you get a ton for him? Sure. But I, I, I think they could be a playoff team still next year if they make some moves on their own and keep kind of patching up the holes that appear there in the starting rotation. So just throwing they won the division. They won, they won the won division. division. Just, this, yeah. just, you know, there's plenty of teams that do well. And then going into the off season, they're like, Oh, this is the window. This is, you know, they're out of it. We lost. Listen, the sky is falling right now with the council thing. Whoever comes in as the manager will create some stability. You'll see how the off season plays out. And there's still a lot of really good talent 
on in on a team that, in my opinion, when they added Carlos Santana and Mark Canna, very very capable, above average big league players, this team started to show a lot of improvement offensively in the identity of there was more people that walked than just Christian Yelich. So some some very some very smart moves for the lineup will enable them to continue to diminish runs given up. Run prevention is what built this team. And if you add a little offense and you plug in some pitching in the places that you lose, whether it's with a trade of Burns, an injury of Big Woo, you add in those pieces, that run prevention is still going to be there. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. All right, so hopefully Brewers fans feel a little bit better. We're feeling probably more positive than most of you. So we'll see you next time on Brew Crew Territory.